Business, which is sponsored by the BBA, the Bellingham Business Association, a nonprofit organization that supports local businesses and gives back to the community. My name is Jason Carroza. I'm the owner of Carroza Law Office PC and also the Vice President of the BBA. And today I'm also your host. Today's uh, guest today, it's going to be the Rick Show. We have Rick Singleton, the owner of Singleton Financial Group, and Rick Kaplan. Hello. Thank you for coming, Hello. who is the president of the commercial division of Remax Executive Realty and the owner of the Shopping Plaza at the Bellingham Commons. Before we get started, I want to provide a brief recap of past BBA events. The BBA met in June at Lowell's Restaurant, and we announced our annual Citizen of the Year Award, which this year went to Lauren DeMedia, director of the Bellingham Senior Center. Congratulations, Lauren. We also awarded two $1,500 scholarships to Bellingham residents who graduated from high school and are furthering their education. The two winners are Nicole Reed from Bellingham High School and Allison LeQueer, who graduated from Blackstone Valley Regional Technical School. Best of luck to both of you. In July, the BBA sponsored the movie Madagascar 3, which was a big hit and one of the town's movie nights. Welcome, Rick and Rick. Thank you for being <laughs> with us on this segment of Strictly Business. Our pleasure. I'm going to start with some rapid fire questions. And, and for our audience that are watching this at home, why don't we start by you know, letting us know a little bit about you, your background, how you got into business, and where you currently stand. And we're going to start with Rick Kaplan. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate being here. Um, it could be a long story. I'm going to make it a real quick short story. <laughs> um, my background actually starts with accounting, and I got into real estate with my father back about 20 years ago as a semi-retired attorney, wanted to invest in real estate. We started uh, buying properties, flipping properties, and so on and so forth. And then um, I got involved in commercial real estate. Uh, because I had the background of investing myself, um, about four years ago, coming on four years this next month, I bought the Bellingham uh, Plaza, which is located right in the center of town. Started renovations in that, and um, I've been doing my own real estate deals as well as working as a commercial broker. As a commercial broker, I represent companies that are looking for office space, office industrial manufacturing, that type of use. Excellent. T tell me a little bit about your training background, any accreditations, or um, I am a, a certified certified commercial investment member, CCIM. It's uh, one of the few designations in my field that is by a third party. It's a it's a school designation or an education designation, I should say, and um, it took about four to five years to get, um, and it shows that I've worked that I've done a certain amount of deals dollar volume, number of deals, all in the commercial field. And I only do commercial. I specialize in commercial, and uh, that's my designation. It's the gold standing. In it industry. really is. It is. Excellent. Mr. Singleton? You can call me Rick. <laughs> <laughs> but he, we might get confused. Same, Rick. The, the same question? Yeah, See, he's calling me Mr. Singleton because I'm older than him. <laughs> discrimination. But uh, I started out in the life insurance business. Actually, I uh, graduated from college, as a lot of people did. Um, back in the uh, 70s. And then I went to work for uh, Unum, at that time the largest disability company and long-term care company in the country. And um, got into the health insurance field and the management position with United Healthcare. So I learned the entire insurance business and then started my own brokerage firm. We did um, employee benefits and 401k plans where I kind of fell in love with the investing side of the business. and. So today I still do a lot of 401k plans for my clients um, as well as personal investing for individuals, but I have a lot of business clients. I still do their health insurance and benefits and have a lot of clients that I do everything for, quite frankly. The owner's personal investing, the, the 401k plan for the employees, the health insurance, the group life, the group disability, the dental, the whole nine yards. And I've been uh, very active over the years in, in um, seeking training, and you have to in this business to stay yeah. on top of uh, the investment field. So it's an I evolving am, landscape, right? Always. Yep. And uh, always changing. So today, you know, I'm a chartered mutual fund counselor. I'm a financial advisor, an investment advisor representative, which means that I, I do either fee-based or, or commission-based 
investments, whatever my client wants. 90% of them today are all fee-based clients. I'm an accredited investment fiduciary, which is uh, really, I think, the most um, important credential that I hold, quite frankly. Because as an accredited fiduciary, we take a pledge, uh, or an oath, if you will, to always do what's in the best interest of the client. And over the years, I've seen a lot of people out there that don't operate that way. They do what's in the best interest of themselves as advisors in their pocketbooks. So. Yeah, and, and I mean, at the end of the day, you want to distinguish yourself amongst the masses, and that's one way to do that. Um, it's a good segue into my next question. We'll start with uh, Rick Kaplan, and that's the sort of services and products you offer, specifically the sort of maybe demographic you're targeted towards. Mm -hmm. As a commercial broker, I, uh, again, I target towards industrial and office tenants. Um, my demographics are my physical location in Bellingham, at the Bellingham Plaza actually. Our main office is in Franklin. So I'm up and down 495 on a regular basis. Most of my clients uh, that I represent, whether I'm selling a building that's uh, 20,000 square foot industrial building, or trying to sell a small office condo, or that type of stuff, is within 20 minutes of, of my home base. As far as helping clients, I've represented a client as far up as Wilmington, as far down as uh, going down to Middleborough, uh, Framingham Natick, I'm there pretty regularly. So it depends on the client, it depends on the needs, but uh, I do, again, it's, it's office and industrial stuff. So it could be a uh, financial planner that's looking to expand their office, a law firm, or a machine shop. And that's what, what I do. Um, I hate to keep going to both points. Uh, as far as my property, Bellingham Plaza, as you know, I've done a lot of renovations there. We actually have one space available right now and that we're looking to lease out. So that property, when I bought it, was about 50% vacant. We're now down to one vacancy, which is 3,000 square feet, and um, retail, so we're looking for someone that can bring people into the property. Excellent, and, and I mean, to your test, testament to that is the fact that you've invested into it. And Oh, it looks terrific. Yeah, yeah. yeah nice, so nice I've gotten a lot of compliments. People stop in and thank me, and I really appreciate those comments. It's been, yeah, you've it's done, been terrific. Yeah, you've done a great job. Thank you. Very nice. As the town moderator, thank you on behalf of the town. Uh, thank you. The town's been <laughs> great to work with. Been a lot of good people. Uh, you got Dennis Frain's a good guy, and the yeah. board of selectmen, they're all good people. So. Yeah. Um, can you tell me, can you comment anything about the state of affairs with regard to the, uh, you know, the commercial market? I mean, we hear a lot about residential and it being a seller market lately. How is it on the other side of the fence with commercial stuff? What do you see? It, it's, it's a difficult market to say what it is exactly. It's still hard to find the right space for your need. So when a client comes to me, I, try to, I usually try to visit their site because I want to know about their need as much as I can. Um, so trying to find the right space for that client's need isn't always the easiest thing in the world. But there is a lot of space out there. And a lot of the numbers that we all hear, that there's hundreds of thousands of square feet available, a lot of those large, big boxes. So yeah. A lot of the big, big companies have downsized over the years or, or they've literally moved out of the state. Uh, EMC has a number of buildings that are vacant right now. But that skews the market. So when we hear that they have 2.4 million square feet from here to here, there on 495, you got to keep in mind that a lot of that is just three different buildings or four different buildings. So overall, I'd say things have picked up quite a bit. Um, we definitely could be busier. Yeah. But I think it's a good sign that myself and my fellow brokers and agents I work with have all been busy. And as long as we're busy, that means the companies are growing, small companies need a little bit more space. Yep. It's a good sign for all of us. I wish it was a little steeper, climbing quicker. Sure. But it, it's definitely going well. Excellent. Rick, tell us a little bit about the products and services you offer. Well, I offer a complete, full range of financial services and products from financial planning, retirement planning. As a stockbroker, which I am Series 7 licensed, which is the highest license you can get in this business, as well as Series 6, which I have in 63 and 66. And I can provide to my clients um, really a full range of, of uh, financial alternatives. Um, <clears throat> you know, there are a lot of folks out there that they end up getting uh, mutual funds. Well, nine times out of ten, they, they have all mutual funds because their advisor can only sell mutual funds. 
in this market today, this kind of volatile market that we're in, if you're only invested in mutual funds, you're not completely protected. Anybody in this business today can make money when, when the market goes up from 6,000 you know, to 15,000, which it has in recent years. The real issue is how much you're going to lose mm. when the market goes down. Mm. It's hard to make that ground up. And it's very difficult to make that ground up, particularly as you approach closer and closer to retirement. So you've got to really be careful as to what you're invested in. So uh, we, I look at investing as, you know, there are a lot of different boxes that I want to fill up. And it's not just mutual funds. If that's the only thing that you're invested in, you'll be a little bit disappointed when yeah. the crash comes again, which it will. may not be 35%, but it mm -hmm. may be close. And, and to your point about people that are jamming the square peg in the round hole, it's about being independent and having the ability to not have to push a particular product. Yeah, we don't do push products, you know. Yeah. We do what's in the best interest of the client. I mean, there's a lot of people out there today, uh, some of who are even accountants selling indexed annuities, you know. Well, you know what, annuity might be of some value for some people in the right situation, right. but it certainly isn't a product that I would give to a lot of people and, and certainly not a large amount of your money. Yeah, I see it in the estate planning context too where you have, it's not a one size fits all model. It's very subjective based on the context of where the client is, where they want to go, and you got to take all of that into consideration. But, you know, as you pointed out, there's some folks that just are strictly monochrome and they're trying to push a particular product, whatever it is, and it may or may not be in the best interest. That's good. I even give my clients a little bit of advice. I mean, we do life, life insurance and long-term care insurance for our clients because we don't have a product. We just go find the best one for the client. Right. And you I, identify the need and then search for I, it. I tell clients, look, at, never buy life insurance from a life insurance agent, please. You know what? You're always going to get what's in the best interest of the agent <laughs> as opposed yeah. to what's in your best interest. Good to know. Thank you. Um, we got. I, I think this is a favorite question of Marjorie, so we'll fit this in. Um, tell us something surprising that you've encountered in your business endeavors. Start with Mr. Kaplan. Um, I was thinking about that, about the different variety of clients I have. And one of, I think it's an interesting story, one of the uh, biggest clients I've ever had was uh, a client of mine that took 20,000 square feet of space and a long-term lease. We did tons of renovations. It was a big project. It was over a year putting the whole thing together. It was a doggy daycare. And I found that very interesting because it's not the typical <coughs> manufacturer or distribution company or straight office. It's something very unique, and uh, because of the length of the term, I became I end up in a uh, very friendly, close relationship with the person who owns a doggy daycare, and uh, we're friends today, and we'll be friends for life. And um, so I think that was a very interesting client I had because it was it was really not the norm, and it became a project that really took well over a year to put together, and um, it's very exciting actually. It is. It, it's it, good to see the business thrive. It's good to see the business thrive, and it yeah. still just amazes me that she sees 150 dogs a day, wow. and et cetera, et cetera. And there's the doggy daycare, the grooming, this, that, the other thing. That the, it's a full dog mecca. It's yeah. amazing, and it's it's really something that I would have never expected to see. So that's I think that's a good story for it what is. Marjorie mentioned that. Yeah. It's something different that you didn't expect. Yeah. And so yeah. that's that's exciting. Mr. Singleton, had a similar story? A doggy story? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't. But I, I do have uh, what's surprising me in my business a lot in recent years is how many seniors, for lack of a better word, folks who are already in retirement or very close to it, who really are unaware of what's available. So many times they have, they're already in retirement and they think that they should, you know, they're, somebody told them that you should be in all bonds, you know, and you should and put your money in the bank and make uh, a quarter of 1%. And they, they really are unaware of all of the vehicles that are out there, like as an example, a, a real estate investment trust. Mm. Sure. And many other vehicles in which you can make a lot more than a quarter of a percent. I mean... Um, 
so there's no reason for a lot of these people to be struggling as much as they are. And um, when they see what they can do, or even buying stocks, quite frankly, dividend paying stocks as a stockbroker, um, you know, I've taken some portion of their money and said, okay, you want to get a check from, uh, you know, Johnson & Johnson, Let's, there's a great company that has a great dividend or whatever company it happens to be. Um, and it's made a, it can make a significant difference mm. in a person's life who's, who's already retired and they're on a fixed income. They don't have to put up with the CD making a quarter of a percent. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah, this. And that's why they turn to you for the, the advice, you know? The People don't know what they don't know. They, uh, exactly. Now, I know we may have gone over this a little bit, but why don't you enlighten us a little bit further as far as what an ideal client is for you? in terms of maybe are they on the threshold of retirement? Do you like to catch them a little bit earlier? What's your sweet spot in your industry? Well, for me personally, um, I, I really don't have a particular sweet spot. I love actually to see young co people come in and or have be referred catch to them me early. Who, was, who have a young family and they're starting out. Because mm -hmm. I wish somebody had grabbed me when mm -hmm. I was 25 years old and said, hey, stupid. Yeah. You know? Uh, you should be doing this. Uh, right. There was nobody at that time. They don't teach fiscal literacy in school. No, they don't teach. Uh, and if they did, would it be in better shape, right? We, as a country, <laughs> a lot of people would be in a lot better shape. Even the simple things. I have clients come in, this, come in to me with all of their questions about their finance. Should I lease Rick a mm -hmm. car? Should I buy the car? Mm -hmm. um, do I do I pay off my mortgage? Yeah. Do I? What do I do with these credit cards? So you know, I'm there as a resource. Well, I don't charge for any of that stuff, but I'm, I'm giving them my advice. And no, you don't pay off your mortgage in most cases. That's my answer. But um, especially with rates like they are today, yeah. pay off the credit cards. But um, what was that question again? Well, I was uh, just no. getting at just your target. Oh, my target of, market. Yeah. Guys like him, you know, who own shopping yeah, guys plots. Yeah, the guys in the 20s. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The guys in the 20s. Yep, yep. But anyway, I have a full range of people. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy, um, again, the people starting out. And then I have a lot of people who are approaching retirement. Mm -hmm. They're in their late 50s. They're in their early 60s who are beginning, you know, and that's a crucial time. Yeah. You know, we call it the red zone. You know, 10 years before you're planning to retire. If you want to retire at 65, well... You can't afford to lose half your money between 55 and 65, or else, guess what? You're not retiring. Right. right. So that's a crucial time. And then the 10 years after you retire. So mm -hmm. there's that red zone that's very, very crucial and very important, what you do with that money. A lot of people, uh, unfortunately, you know, sometimes make the wrong moves. So. Yeah. That's what I'm here for, to make sure they don't make those mistakes. I may not make you rich, but I'll make sure you're not poor. Right. That's very fair. Rick, with regard to your target demographic, you had mentioned with businesses that are established and also expanding, do you do a lot of work also with startups? I do. Right I mean, it's the box. nature of the business. We do. Um, I represent a number of properties where uh, what I call incubator space, whether um, it's a shared office environment that I yep. represent two different properties at. I have a small um, a client that has a building that has a couple 1,200 square foot flex spaces so we've gone a lot of companies that started off there that grew that I was able to move to larger spaces so yeah naturally you end up working with smaller companies growing etc uh, being a local guy those companies those companies small companies usually don't go to like the the large national brokerage companies looking for real estate advice so they they you know, end up with me there's a lot of references and stuff like that so I do that a lot and, and that's a benefit you provide your your clients being a native and understanding exactly you know, absolutely the territory. you know I, I grew up in the area yeah. and, and I've always been you know in the area and, and but I would say uh, uh, most of my clients you know are, are looking somewhere from the as far as office 4,000 to 10,000 square feet well I, more four to six is probably the correct number where someone's got about 10 to 15 employees um, looking to expand or combine two different locations. Um, and so we do a lot of that. So I was just up in the boroughs looking at space for a client for that exact requirement. And, um, and as far as industrial stuff, you know, we're all over. Cause a lot of the industrial stuff is largest, largest square footage. But a lot of it, like you said, smaller. It could be, you know, 
1,200 square feet. So uh, companies that are growing, you know, when, yep. when, when someone notices that uh, either their company or their neighbor or what have you, uh, when they're at work and there's two people to a cube and the parking lot's full, that's when it should click up. You know what? This company really needs more space. So that's what I try to tell friends of mine, you know, because you don't necessarily hear when they're looking for space. Or well, if you do, it's too late. Well, that's just it. It's too yeah. late, yeah. But if you notice that, my goodness, you know, this company, this, they Starting got so many people. The they're to bust through the seams, exactly. Yeah. That's a t good time for me to make a phone call. Yep, and at least explore what their options are so they can yeah. plan ahead. And it costs nothing. I send them a report. I let them know what's out there. What, you know, are they paying too much currently? Should they stay where they're at? Should they not stay? So, you know, I, yeah, I, and, and that's where the synergy, I think, is in your business is there's a planning piece here that you have to be proactive mm -hmm. because sometimes when you're reacting to something that's already occurred, it's too late. Yeah. You know? Um, I know we have a little bit of time, so I am going to throw out this question, and it is an ambush question, so <laughs> either of you can jump question. at this. Um, <laughs> One of the questions I like, and I get asked often as an estate planning attorney, is what are the traps for the unwary in your industry? You know, something that maybe someone's not aware of that you can maybe share with our viewers that they would find important. Traps. Yeah. Well, I'll just throw out, a, I could throw out a hundred of them, but um, people who buy annuities. Yeah. Who don't realize that there is a uh, surrender period that you, mm -hmm. in which you can't get your money if you needed to. So if you've if you've tied up a lot of your money in an annuity, and now all of a sudden three years from now something happens, maybe a medical problem or something else, that with something goes wrong in the home, or and you need cash, yeah, you're going to pay a huge penalty to get your money out. Yeah, and if that wasn't explained to you, then there's a problem with you, whoever sold it to you. You know so. The other thing is on the 401k side of my business, as a fiduciary, you know, uh, when I am an, am an advisor to a 401k plan with, a, with one of my businesses, business client, um, I'm a co-fiduciary on that plan. Our company allows us to be co-fiduciary, so we're taking a lot of responsibility to make sure that thing is, is uh, handled properly from the company's perspective and from an investment advisor's perspective. But there are a lot of fees yeah. that uh, a lot of business people out there who have 401ks for their employees don't realize they're paying. No. They're hidden. Mm -hmm. And you really need somebody to find, to, and to uncover those fees and, and show you a better way because that is your employee's money mm -hmm. that is being taken yeah. out of those accounts and to pay fees. That's a trap. You need to be aware of it. You need to search it out. You need to find somebody who's an expert to find it because sometimes they're very well hidden. Yeah, no, that's very good. Rick, do you have something quickly? Yeah, we're we're real quickly I'll say, yeah. uh, there's free information out there. Yeah. And you should use it. You know, call me up, ask, you know, I find out from people that I've worked with, and I call them up, you know, we haven't spoken in a year, hey, how's it going? Oh, oh my gosh, you know, Rick, how you doing? Oh, I, sign, I end up signing lease. Oh, okay. They don't realize, I'm glad to just speak with them and find out, you know, what was the deal? And then sometimes I find out, they shouldn't have signed that deal. Yeah. It was not a good deal. It wasn't in the best interest. They went directly off, they called somebody off the sign who represents that ownership. They met with them, they did a deal, they signed a lease, and it, it's way above market, or, or they're locked in uh, under a closet they should not have been locked in under. And um, I'm glad to review that stuff with people. I'm not an attorney, mm -hmm. by any means, uh, but I've done this enough times that I can look at something and get a pretty good idea of, you gotta be careful. You gotta, you know, people can call me up and just ask me, hey, this is what I'm paying for rent right now. Is it a good deal? Should I move? Should I stay? What's, what's going on? I mean, I have the information and I'm glad to share it. Rick, can you tell our viewers the best way they can uh, contact you? Uh, my office is here in Bellingham, in the Bellingham Commons. Um, my phone number is 508-541-1350. Um, and my email is very simple, Rick Kaplan, with a K, Rick Kaplan at RemaxExec.com. Excellent. And Rick, yeah. how can they reach you? Uh, my phone number, 508-928-2953, and my office is right on Pulaski Boulevard, 360, right across almost from uh, Walgreens on Pulaski Boulevard. Uh, Rick, well, I have a long email, but I have to have it because of... Uh, you know, Curious. FINRA regulations. <laughs> Rick dot Singleton at Cambridge Resource dot com. Excellent. 
With the time remaining, I want to wish our viewers a safe and happy rest of the summer. In September, we'll have our annual golf tournament, which will raise money for charitable causes, including the annual scholarships award we give to graduating high school seniors, which I referenced earlier. In closing, I just want to thank Rick Singleton and also Rick Kaplan for being our guests today. And I want to encourage our viewers to check back in for next month's edition of Strictly Business coming in September. Thank you. Thank you.